welcome to my 2018 A-Liner Scout Light remodel. I've uh, been getting a lot of questions about it, so I thought I'd just make a video and uh, give you a little virtual tour and then kind of dive into some of the details about how I did it. Uh, so we'll start out with an overview and then get into each one of the systems as we go. So what did I do to the inside? Uh, you can take a look around in here. This used to all be contact paper. So the actually the biggest part of the remodel was putting in vinyl fake wood siding. Uh, it's just sticky vinyl wood planks that uh, are about an eighth of an inch thick uh, and with sticky stuff on the back. Uh, so I took a heat gun, ripped out all the contact paper, and then put siding all up and down uh, all of the surfaces. Um, the next thing I did is I added LED light strips up and over the top of the A-frame. Uh, it's really neat. Uh, I can control the brightness and the color, uh, and the A-frame makes such a cool frame for, uh, for a lighting strip. I uh, also added some reading lights or cooking, whatever you need. Uh, I, did, uh, I expanded the sleeping uh, and seating. Uh, so that I can seat six in here and I can sleep three. Usually you can only sleep two. Um, I added custom countertops. I didn't do the countertops myself. I didn't have the uh, facilities for it, but I uh, used a service called Raptor Woodworking PDX. If you're in the Portland area, you can uh, contact Kevin Marr. He did a really nice job with these countertops, uh, did them to my specifications. Uh, great guy, so check, check it out. Uh, Raptor Woodworking PDX. Uh, I added water system, so a water pump and a sink and a faucet that folds down so that I can fold the camper down. I added a propane cooktop, and in addition to the uh, cooktop on the propane system, I also have a propane heater. I used a suburban heater and a thermostat so I can keep it warm in here. I added a 12 volt uh, Dometic cooler on a slide out so that I can keep things nice and cold and not worry about ice. Uh, it's a very minimal draw from the 12 volt system. It works really well. Um, I added drawers all the way around on the bottom uh, for lots of storage. I know that uh, I sacrificed some of the storage for you could lift up the seats but uh, it's hard to get to those things if people are in here. So that's why I went for the drawers. It's a lot easier to grab stuff out instead of making people stand up and going under the, uh, under the seat to get all your storage. Uh, and then finally, I added a slide out bar and uh, cups that fit into the circular holes on the table. So that's, that's kind of basically what I did. Uh, now we're gonna, dive into each one of those systems and I'll give you a little bit more detail. So like I said before, I have a very basic garage, just a workbench and some hand tools. And really that's all I used to do this remodel. Uh, mainly I was using a circular saw, I actually killed one of my circular saws, <laughs> I had to get a new one. Uh, I used a, uh, a heat gun, uh, that was really handy. Uh, the uh, vibrating multi-tool was uh, just essential for cutting the, the vinyl planks. Uh, lots of uh, impact driving and drilling. And then I also used a couple of jigs, the, uh, the hidden drawer jig, and I also used a dowel jig to make my uh, drawer boxes. Uh, but aside from that, just regular, you know, uh, screwdrivers and putty knives and uh, T-squares and some of the basic things that you have around your garage. So let's talk remodel. What did I actually do? First thing I did when I got it is I took out all of the old stuff that was in here, all the old cabinetry, all the old drawer faces, the, the, uh, the brown uh, plywood veneer siding, took all that out. So all that was really left was the studs that supported the benches. That's it. Uh, once I got all of that out, then I took a heat gun to the contact paper that was already starting to fall off anyway. Um, 
I just didn't want to put new contact paper on, so I came up with a different solution. Uh, I ordered uh, fake wood vinyl adhesive plank siding from Wayfair. Uh, usually meant just for interior walls, but I figured it would work pretty well in here. Um, I wanted vinyl because I know that when you're popping it up and down, uh, and I'm out in the snow, I could get a lot of water in here, so I needed something waterproof. Um, when I was fitting the siding, uh, it says that you should cut it with a razor blade, but that just takes so much time. So uh, my best friend for that was the vibrating multi-tool, and that made cutting these uh, vinyl planks a breeze. One note about if you're going to put this vinyl siding on in your A-liner is that it is a noticeably different weight than the regular roof panels. So when you are popping it up or taking it down, uh, just be careful, know that it will be heavier than you're used to. It still works and the springs still uh, assist you, but uh, just, just know it's gonna come down faster than normal. So like I was saying, there is a lot of storage under the seats here, but in order to get to it, you need to stand up and lift up the seats and um, I just knew I would have people in here and I would want to be getting at stuff a little bit quicker than that. So uh, I decided to build some drawers. The first thing I did is measure out my drawers and make my boxes. And for that, I used a dowel jig. It was really simple to use. You just line it up and drill your holes. Uh, how did I actually mount a drawers in here? Um, I just made L-shaped brackets and screwed the drawer slides onto the L-shaped brackets. Uh, then I screwed those brackets onto the floor. So really simple L-shaped wooden uh, supports there. And uh, yeah, it seemed to work really well. No problems with it so far. The other way that I use drawer slides is that I made a slide for the Dometic cooler. Uh, because this was gonna be holding a little bit more weight than the regular drawers, uh, for my L-shaped bracket, I decided to use angle iron. So I just went to Home Depot and got a, uh, a piece of angle iron, used a, used a grinder to cut it in half and uh, to, to length. Uh, I screwed my drawer slides into the side and then screwed the uh, angle iron down to the floor and made my own drawer slide instead of spending like $300 on one uh, online. So that was a really cheap solution. Uh, it's worked really well so far. Just cut the plywood to fit and, uh, and you're good to go. So for the electrical system, uh, I was lucky that this camper came with a WFCO power center. So that means that uh, it can, if it's plugged into shore power, it can run uh, the AC circuits. So I, there's a couple outlets in here. Uh, and also the DC circuits, so all of the lighting and the fans and everything that was included with it. Um, but I knew that I wasn't going to always be around shore power, so I needed to find a different way to power uh, this system. Uh, so I've tried an EcoFlow Pro uh, with an extra battery. This just came out, it gives me 1,440 watt hours of power that is good enough for, for a couple of days out running my lights and my fridge and my heater uh, and my water pump. Um, so it's uh, so far been really, really nice. Um, lots of ways to charge it. I can charge it with the car. I can charge it with shore power. Um, I can take it into my house and charge it if I want to. Uh, it's been a really neat system. The only thing to keep in mind if you are using uh, this EcoFlow is that the DC outs, um, the little 12 volt plugs, I tried with one of the plugs, but it wasn't enough uh, power to actually drive the WFCO converter. But once I used both of those uh, 12 volt plugs and combined them together into the, the 12 volt system of the WFCO power converter, it seemed to uh, have enough to push through. Let's take a more in-depth look at how I wired it up. It is all a mix between our WFCO power converter and the EcoFlow battery bank that I installed. So, there it can be powered in different ways. Uh, first of all, we could take shore power and we plug it directly into our outlet, which 
turns the WFCO power converter on. It activates the AC system, so all the AC outlets start working. You can run your blender. Uh, you could also charge uh, your EcoFlow battery bank off of this AC system. It also turns on the DC system under shore power. So you got your heater and your 12 volt outlets and your light and your water pump. Uh, that all works under shore power. Now, if you don't have shore power, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the EcoFlow. And what you can do is you turn your 12 volts on. 12 volts will activate the DC system and go directly to the heater and outlets and lights and water pump. Or if you turn on your inverter, your 110 volt out, you can simulate the shore power with a double pull, double throw switch right here. And then that will run the AC systems. Now, if you have to do that, you have to unplug this 110 in, otherwise you get a loop. Uh, but you can power your AC outlets and your blender uh, through the EcoFlow uh, AC out. How do you charge it? Well. If you're, char if you're plugged into shore power, uh, it will run the AC system and you can plug it in and you can use your 110 in. Or if you are driving, you can use the 12 volt in on the back of the EcoFlow battery bank to charge it from the car. So the lighting in here uh, was, it's a really nice touch. It really just, just adds uh, a nice, nice feel to the whole environment and it hides all my little mistakes uh, that I made on the siding. The, uh, the A-frame is such uh, like a nice way to have indirect LED lighting and I also put it down on the floor so I could see what's in the drawer and not lose stuff under the table. Uh, it works really well. Basically I ran uh, power from the 12 volt system over to a LED control panel. It's an RGBW. Then I ran some RGBW extension cord over to a splitter and split that signal four ways. So I have four LED strips, uh, two on the A-frames and two under the benches. So I used uh, weatherproof, uh, like coated RGBW LED strips. And uh, that's been really handy because there's a lot of condensation in here. I uh, used 3M weatherproofing tape uh, to for, for double stick tape and mounted it and it's been really sticky and good. Um, the hardest thing about the lighting is, uh, was the reading lamps that I added to the side. Uh, I actually had to use a Dremel tool and drill through the plywood and through some of the foam insulation to run some plastic conduits and then I put the wire through that plastic conduit and then mounted the reading lights. Uh, and that channel is now hidden by the siding that I put over it. I installed a uh, sink and a faucet, a nice ambassador faucet that folds down. Um, I got the smallest bar sink that I could find with a nice little strainer at the bottom to catch bits of food so it doesn't just clog up my uh, gray water drain tube. Um, I got a 12 volt water pump and I put a strainer into it and just used a little bit of nylon tubing in there. Uh, I used a small water reservoir and some quick connect valves so that I can disconnect it from, uh, from the system and take the five gallon container out and fill it up or dump it or whatever. Uh, that has been pretty good so far. I think the, the thing that I'm really glad that I did uh, with the plumbing is that I put in a kill switch for the power to the uh, water pump. And this was really important because uh, I did have a problem with the sink leaking. And if I uh, didn't have a kill switch for the pump, it would just constantly run. So I was turning it on and off using the kill switch uh, instead of the faucet at that point. I also added a propane system to this camper. Did not come with one, but I knew I was gonna be doing cold weather camping, so I, I was gonna need some cooking and some uh, heat for being in here on those cold nights. Uh, the cooktop was relatively easy. Um, I put the propane canister on the outside, ran some tubing through the bottom of the camper, and up to my cooktop with a regulator. Uh, 
So I just ordered that on Amazon and just put it into the countertop. Uh, just works, very easy uh, install. The thing that was trickier was the propane heater. I used the Suburban SQ NT series. Uh, it, uh, it's been working well so far. The first unit I ordered, I actually had to return. The circuit board was dead and I just wasn't getting any power through it. Uh, then the next one that I ordered, it actually worked and I got the fan to spin, but it was making a terrible noise. It wasn't aligned properly. I actually had to go use my multi-tool to cut little grooves out of the plastic fan so that the fan wouldn't hit the metal casing that it was in. Uh, so with a lot of alteration, I was able to get it working so that it was, it was quiet, uh, hooked it up to a, a nice little digital thermostat, and uh, it's been, now it's been working great. Uh, ran some ducting, uh, I have two ducts there, and ran those out to uh, some plastic vents uh, that I installed. And then uh, the intake, I didn't quite know where to put it under uh, the intake because it was under the bench. So my solution there was I, I kind of Swiss cheese the wall of the cabinet right behind where the fridge slides out. And that seems to be enough airflow to take it in through the Swiss cheese holes and then to push it out through those vents. So I'm really happy about the way that it worked. Uh, incredibly happy to uh, be able to roll over in bed and turn on that uh, heater in the morning. And it's, uh, it's been working great so far. Okay, so that's what I did. Uh, it was a great project and I am looking forward to many adventures in this. Uh, going across the country, we'll, we'll see where it takes me. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will put the link to my Amazon shopping list in the, the comments below so you can check that out. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, can't wait to see what you do to your A-liners.